one of the things I loved about Star Wars and still love about Star Wars is that I find it to be a very democratic story story in that you have multiple artists playing in this giant sandbox together for the most part creating and weaving together a cohesive and coherent tapestry of story and i don't think in the literary world such a thing actually exists i think ever at all in human history where you have hundreds and hundreds of artists and writers all contributing to again for the most part a cohesive story Hello, OneSunnyDay.com podcast. Today, my guest is Mike Brennan, creator of the Star Wars Chronology Project. You can find at StarWarsChronologyProject.blogspot.com. And his newest book, The Dread Pirate Zim and The Treasure of Darth Hevel, will be coming out December 2021. Greetings, Mike, and welcome to the podcast. Greetings. Right, so the topic today is uh, state of uh, Star Wars, Star Wars universe, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you could begin by telling us what state you think uh, Star Wars is in and where it's going from here. I say I think Star Wars is in a pretty good state, um, despite what you might hear on on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, I think I think we're entering um, like a silver age of Star Wars, almost uh, with the release of you know Disney Plus shows and uh, the Mandalorian, Ahsoka Tano. Uh, the rogue movie coming out. So I think, I think it's in a very good and healthy state. Okay. So what's the next, what's the next uh, piece of fiction that's coming out? So the book of Boba Fett, I think is what uh, has got a lot of star Wars fans excited. I know what has me particularly excited is the uh, Ahsoka Tano show, uh, which is, which is coming out. I don't know what the exact date of that is. Um, but yeah, you've got the book of Boba Fett coming out. I think, the director of Wonder Woman 1984, uh, what's her name? One St. Johnson is directing a new Star Wars movie called Rogue Squadron. And uh, the trailer for that was pretty exciting. So uh, I'm looking forward to, see, to seeing what happens there. So, yeah, I did, I did eventually get around to watching the second uh, season of The Mandalorian. I got as far as the fourth episode, at which time I decided that if I was in uh, the universe, I would uh, definitely profit heavily by a new invention called a tent. I'd just be <laughs> like, I have this have this new invention. You can take it out to the desert and you can keep your stuff in the tent. You can sleep right. in the tent. So what, what made you uh, because, what, the Star Wars tent invention? What, what particular episode were you like, you know what, I think they would benefit from a tent here. Everyone, everyone would benefit from a tent. No one seems to have a tent. The uh, the sand people are tentless. They're just <laughs> they're just no, they're sitting around. Mud. They've got they've got their mud huts. Luke Sky or Anakin Skywalker went through it with his lightsaber. I never know. saw I never saw a mud hut. Um, the um, the uh, thing the that I okay, fair enough. The yeah. uh, thing I noticed about the um. Uh, the reason that the reason this uh, put me onto it is because, as you know, from from Mandalorian season one, one of my right. original concerns is what are we doing with the helmet? Because for the first three episodes, he's like, I don't take this helmet off ever. There's right. like no way I take it off. And I'm like, this is just impractical. <laughs> Hair, grooming issues, you know, you yeah. puke once yeah. and you yeah, did. Well, you know. Yeah, this is unworkable. And then and then they they backed off that and they're like, okay, well, we don't take our helmet off with other people. Right. right, That's when we right. Don't take yeah. Yeah. But but you know, among friends, late night, whatever. Um, we don't take well, it off either. But if we're all alone, we can take it off. That. And then um what happened is they sort of backed off on that. I'm like, okay, now we have a more they've like flushed it out to make it more reasonable, right? Yeah. And then we get to um then we get to uh the sand people. And I'm like, okay, well, the sand people have a similar thing. You know, I got yeah, a yeah. helmet. I'm, I'm, I got some wrapping. It's complicated. I, just, I don't take it off at a whim, right? right like right. this is really takes a long time to come on and off. And yeah. then, and then, but we see the Mandalorian around the campfire. Presumably, yeah. they're all going to sleep. And I'm like, do they ever take these head wrappings off? <laughs> now we're back to the season one problem. <laughs> well, my joke was, um, did you did you catch the episode where? Uh, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, comes across the other Mandalorian. You got one yet? Uh, he hasn't come across a real Mandalorian. He came across, uh, I think it's Bo-Katan. Yeah, did you I don't see know if they're real Mandalorians or not. Um, 
Yeah, I did see that episode. And they all like took the helmets off. He's like, what are we right. doing, guys? Were, what are we doing here? Horrified. Yeah, so they were horrified that he he was horrified that they took their helmets off, right? Yeah. If you if you I mean the acting's pretty good behind a mask, but he seems to be horrified. And uh the joke I made on Facebook was something along the lines was uh you know, I I always liked Din Dijarn. I like him even more because it turns out he's a pre-Vatican II Mad Mad Mandalorian. Which yes, exactly. <laughs> makes me like him a bit more. <laughs> he's like, well, I do, I do. Listen, I did like that element. I did like the element that we're following the Mandalorian around, and we're like, this is, I don't know. He seems sort of over the top and and, and overly whatever. And then he runs into these other guys, and they're like, it's the year two thousand, man. We haven't been doing this for four hundred years. <laughs> I'm telling you, throw up in that helmet once, and you're like, yeah. "We got to take this off right now." There's, there's no way, and and they're all like, "Hey, we're we're going to, uh, um, you know, retake Mandalore." I don't know the backstory. You can fill in the backstory. Right. We're going to go yeah. retake the planet of Mandalore. Uh, it's three guys, no ship, but uh, <laughs> you should probably abandon your long-held religious teachings and come with us uh, because yeah, there's yeah, three yeah. of us. We got a ship now, so I mean, it's better than we yeah. started. Um, yeah, but yeah, what's yeah. the backstory of the whole Mandalore business on the planet? Oh man, that's that's heavily explored in the Star Wars Rebel series, the uh, animated Rebel series. Have you did you take a look at that at all? Or uh, no, no, I can't say. No, I've okay. watched a couple like uh, the Rebel series up to. Uh, I, I've, I've watched a little bit of it. I haven't watched it through. Right. So there's this thing, the dark saber. You, you you come across that right, and this is sort of the binding force, the Excalibur of the Mandalorian culture. And uh, whoever holds the dark saber is, you know, uh, the king or queen of, of Mandalore, whatever it is. And and, and Bo Katan, I think, is competing for that. So there's, I mean, I can't really recall it right now, but there's a huge long backstory about, um, you know, her her lineage. It has to do with like Mandalorian lineages, um, and it's very like any kind of royal lineage. It gets complicated very quickly. You know, I suppose as a Star Wars, I should know these things, but. I don't know them in like immense detail. Well, hey, listen, I asked you a random, I asked you a random, uh, a random question of a random piece of, of, uh, yeah. of, well, of here, fiction. Here's, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll toss some names out there for anyone that wants to follow this. So Abel Pen, uh, Pena, Abel G. Pena, um, he wrote an article for Star Wars Insider back in, I want to say 2005, and it was about Mandalorian culture. And as a matter of fact, all the Mandalorian stuff that's in the show and that the writers are using for that show are – they're mining Abel G. Pena's work. Yeah, kind of like the new um, the new series, the new Darth Vader series comic book, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. It's sort of flushing out uh, the sort of the Darth Vader backstory in the, in the missing years kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's actually uh, – here, I'll throw something else out. Uh, there's a great YouTube channel called um, Star Wars Audio Comics. And it's really neat. I actually subscribe to them. I, I support them through Patreon, just a couple bucks a month. But they add um, voice acting and sound effects to the comics, and it makes it extremely entertaining. And I'm I'm actually going through their Darth Vader material right now on their on their YouTube channel. It's Star Wars Audio Comics. So if anyone wants to check that out, like it's they you know have 11 minute um, episodes. You sit down with coffee and watch it. It's very entertaining. Well, there you go. But the so, but the 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 thrust of it, I haven't I haven't read them, but I did read an article about uh, talking about them, and they sort of and they sort of said that this completes one of my long standing uh, complaints with Star Wars, and that what is the star? What is the story of Darth Vader? Right, like Darth Vader is is you know is cutting down Padawans, which you'd think would be sort of you know uh, uh, something you can't get, yeah, something you can't get by, and uh, and then you know unspeakable evil through the ages you know then luke finds him and we're kind of like you know in one desperate act throws off the emperor and it's like not only are you sort of forgiven you're a blue force jedi right something i guess the padawans couldn't get because they weren't trained enough so too bad for them a little more training they could have been jedi too but they got cut down too early so so he's rewarded with blue force jedi status whereas you're like What's going on with Chuck? Like he was a good guy too. We don't see him. Life is not something that's actually heavily. It's explored a little bit, and um, I'll throw it another another Star Wars writer there if anyone's interested. Dan Wallace in his uh, in his Jedi archives. He was like a 
a book, um, you know, the Book of the Jedi, the Book of the Sith. And in these books, he really attempts to explore this sort of metaphysical side of like what happens after death with regards to the Force. Um, but that's not really flushed out because that gets very uh, complicated very quickly. Do you know what I mean? Like you start um, treading upon, you know, actual theology and whatnot. And so you've got to start going, you know, like what, you know, how am I going to anchor this? Uh, you know, how, how do I create a Jedi religion? And I think it's, it's you know, it's happening. It, I mean, there are people who, who declare their religion Jedi. Um, so it's something that's been explored organically through multiple writers right but that's still it's all very vague it's still you know how one becomes a force ghost and who doesn't become a force ghost and who who judges that like who who's the arbiter of that you know like the force and you know so well that's the problem the problem is it's a redemption story he's redeemed and you're like yeah but i remember from previous movies him cutting down pad ones that seems like something unredeemable and you have to square the two things before i'm going to start declaring my religion jedi i'm like i still got this problematic story and 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 so i've always thought that's the the the, the central problem now apparently the comics um uh, sort of answer that by the idea that the emperor is the ultimate sort of like just crushing asshole Right. He's just he's just mentally crushing Vader every minute, every second. Vader can never really get his 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 um, like, you know, get his bearings. He's punishing him. Right. And, and, and Vader is kind of depicted in the comics. This is my understanding is kind of this like endlessly beaten down dog under the thumb of a, a complete, you know, psychopath. Yeah, so again, I'll, I'm going to reference the Star Wars audio comics, and they did one, if someone wants to look at this, it's called Vader's Dream, and there's a great visual in this, it's about, it's about nine minutes long, where, um, you know, Darth Vader is going through this uh, progression of his descent into evil, and the, the artists in that did have a really cool scene where he's sort of entering this temple, he's entering this Sith temple, and on one side, you have Emperor Palpatine, and on the other, you have Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then the text between them is um, Vader's speech to Luke uh, in The Empire Strikes Back, where he says, I am your father. And so I thought that was a brilliant piece of artistry, because on the one hand, you have Palpatine, and on the one hand, you have Obi-Wan Kenobi, and, and Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader, is is sort of torn between these two fatherly um, uh, people. And I think that idea of the crushing father, the abusive father, is the thumb that Anakin slash Darth, Darth Vader is under. And, and that's how he is able to uh, control Darth Vader, right, is his, is his father-son relationship. And that's one of the themes that are always through Star Wars, right, the father-son relationship. Well, it's – I mean, that's – the and then – I mean, my, my complaint with the previous one is – is that you know? Is what's the what's the redeeming structure of Darth Vader? And then of course, I can. My point is, I can buy that the Emperor is such a a, a maniac that he's just crushing him all the time, and he can never get established, right? But the the problem with that is, it, it's not depicted that way in the movies. Now I get the problem. The problem is, hey, we have this character. He's a psych. You know, he's he's being emotionally crushed by this like this robotic psychopathic maniac right so we need to depict we need you to depict being just like mentally crushed and overwhelmed by this psycho and the movies for kids go remember it's for kids too we got to sell a lot of toys so you know act the scene and let me know how it works out right you know where's the justice in this do you know what i mean so where's the justice for this for the for the slain children how does he get a, a blue force ghost i mean that's difficult that's a difficult question to answer you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I attempt to, to, to address that in my own fan fiction writings, right? Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's a big question, you know. Where is, where is the, the justice in the whole uh, – you know, I can have redemption. I'm good with redemption. But what about the justice, right? Um, there's a big issue of, of where does justice come from? Well, um, I, I, don't, I don't think that there necessarily has to be – justice so so long as as there's as the as the surrounding narrative uh uh this is as the surrounding narrative just shows you know if you're involved with the force there's no justice you know you you, you could have 
you, you get involved in lots of things that are just, you know, uh, uh, whims of fate. You know, somebody gets cancer young. There's no justice in there. Nobody's asking, like, where's the yeah, justice, yeah. right? It's just like, this is yeah, cancer. Yeah. So if this is yeah. just being in the Jedi, you know, you know, this is sort of the downside of it. We, we you know, you, you could, you could, you could create lots of constructions where I realize there's no justice and you could even, you know, you know, have this, you, you could even make this balancing the scales. We're getting rid of the emperor who's hardly like a minor problem. We're having, this is a continual problem. He's yeah, coming yeah. back. We're putting robots on his back and he's, you know, he's still here. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, you could make this really sick thing where you'd be like, "Well, this outweighs, yeah, you know, all these pad ones. This this was such yeah, a yeah, good yeah. deed." Which, which of course, you know, seems like a seems like a rather difficult ethical stance for the Disney Corporation to take on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might be. It might be. Uh, speaking of which, of, of bizarre ethical stances from the Disney Corporation, I. Went through uh, season two, and uh, previous to this, of course, you'd heard the news article that Cara Dune, I think her name is, uh, was booted for for right wing views, and they said, "Oh well, she's a guest character." I'm like, "Okay, she's a guest character," and then I start guest character. She's in all the episodes. She's like in half of them. She's not a. She's half of the show, guys. She's the only. No, I mean, she's. Then if, uh, maybe yeah, I think maybe half is fair. I can't, I didn't do the math, but I think maybe half might be fair. Well, I mean, as as opposed to the riveting elements of seeing a guy in a helmet attempt to act, and he's doing the best he can. Don't get me wrong. I think he's doing a wonderful job. I think he's, I I think mean, he's the hell out of that place. Uh, listen, yeah. but I, I, again, again, he's doing the best he can. I'm like, what's actually? I don't know. I'm going to say breathing life into the show, right? Yeah. Well. To me, every time you go back, when they touch her, you're like, okay, she's a marshal. They fixed this town. Yeah. The Mandalorian is just banging around the universe. He knows not why, right? He doesn't, he's like, I've been quested to deliver the child. After that, I'm thinking about getting enough money for a taco stand, you know, because like my <laughs> love of Mexican eating is so great. You know, what, he's not doing what, anything. What do do next? Yeah. What does he do next? Oh. No, he doesn't even have his home base with the armorer. Yeah. He's like, I'm thinking of getting some books and maybe trying to be an armorer. I mean, he's just blowing around, right? And 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 that's fine. Like, no, no, there's a lot there. He's got the dark saber, right? So this is he's he's carrying Excalibur. No, I mean, I mean, in general, the show is just him blowing around up until you know what I mean. It's not, it's not that, it's not that. Um, um, he's he's like he's he's saying well i've been quested he's like you know i've been quested to bring this child back to the jedi and now the characters go as if you were doing a lot before right like like he's he's bounty hunting and uh all right here i'll, I'll play a, you know defense attorney for the mandalorians here so um you know his uh his, his tribe has been obliterated you know and uh he's trying to collect his tribe you know and i think that's that's the and he's, you know, uh, hunting bounties and, and, and trying to bring some sort of cowboy justice to the universe uh, by by setting things right uh, through some sort of, I guess, rough moral code. Uh, you know, it has that Western sort of feel. So, you know, uh, he's got Excalibur. He's the he's the king of his tribe. He's going to have uh, challengers, and and it's this thing where it's thrust upon him, right? So those are the greatest people that you almost want to have powers, the ones that don't want it, right? The ones that say, you know, I wasn't even searching for this. I, I don't want this. There's sort of a, I would say, a, a moral center there to not desiring power. I think desiring power is a bit uh, problematic, but he doesn't desire the power, but, you know, it's been thrust upon him through circumstances and, uh, you know, he, he's going to collect his tribe. And I think this is a, a cool storyline is the, is bringing, uh, getting the band back together, you know? Oh yeah, listen, I have no problem with when when it comes to the end. My point is up like if you had the Mandalorian previously, his he was trying to get money to get Beskar to armor up, right? He was like trying to level up. And you're like, okay, I see. yeah, like listen, if you got nothing else to do and you can't take your helmet off, like what else are you gonna do? Right? Try and get more things you're not allowed to take off. So so you know, to see if you can get like a whole Christmas tree of of things you you know, you can take off only rarely. So um, I can see that leveling up process and that was like his thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, here's the windfall. I've got like the, the, the total suit, right? So I'm I'm cool. So what was your point about Cara Dune then? 
my point about Cardoon is it's, it's like when they go back, you're like, hey, this is this is a universe I care about, right? She's 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 a character you don't like. I don't feel. Uh, I mean, I mean, he's the main character. He's the kind of gunslinger. I get, I, I get the. I get the problematic element I, of, of the photorealistic special effects, which is still in this sort of, I want to say deliberately campy, but slightly, it's like a slightly like a, a Western, you know, take on things, right? It's not, it's not designed. Like I don't put my hand up and go, man, these troopers are dying way too easily. You know, it's the old, I shoot 50 bandits at a time. Then they come to a door of them and they're like, there's too many stormtroopers. I'm like, well, you just killed 300, man. Why are six now a problem? We can't take it cover me they don't know what cover me means either um cover me the idea is that no one sticks their head around the corner while someone's shooting so if you get someone shooting at people who are behind a barrier they'll see the bullets going over their heads and they'll decide it's a bad time to stick their head up and shoot back so that's cover me covering fire is the idea but in this universe like the stormtroopers are all like in a closet and they're firing they're firing no matter what right so the, the guy's like cover me nothing changes and then runs you know throws his you need the drama you need the drama it's a buck rock that's why i'm i'm not complaining about that element i'm not complaining about that element because i realize that they're it's trying to be fun and campy on top of and then the problem is the effects are so good and the resolution of the of the vision is so good like they get those campy elements like i was i was like um when the sci-fi spiders attacked were, were attacking them I'm like these spiders are really investing a lot in mopping up one person like the, the first 10 i'd be like okay okay but you know what i mean and then it's like 20 30 it's like could the spiders not be like a lot of us are dying but like the the main spiders like i just can't let this go even though definitionally I must lose about four to 800 children a day uh, because you don't see many big ones. So they're dying somehow. Uh, I, I still can't let this injustice go of this one guy, maybe, or maybe not eating one of my baby spiders. She takes a quick count. She's like, was one missing. He's got stuff on his face. Game time. All of us, all of us, we just go, there's no real plan. We just get this guy. And then after that, we'll worry about, you know, continuing on this, planet after we've crushed our own ice cave in um and and, and go for this so listen i'm giving them all of the element of that you're, you're you're filing your uh you know complaints to the jubilation committee you know yeah I'm, yeah the, my, my only i have no complaints with any of that my my um um I do think the helmet thing is too much. I, 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 the helmet thing has been really bothering you for a long time. Yeah, it's been bothering me because because they've they they sort of initially established this and then realized it was nuts and then backed it off, right? And then and now he's uh, um, he's a single person, like you know, who's sort of attached desperately to the to the creed. But here's my point. My point is, um, he's you know he's still trying to he's 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 uh, um, rescuing the baby yoda i'm not you know whatever right but but the the cara dune character seems genuinely likable yeah she is. she is and and so i don't it's no small thing that she doesn't show up in the next season if any, if any disney executives are 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 sitting around saying ah oh, we'll find someone else to replace her i don't think you will there are some good candidates you know bounce around but I, what i will say about the whole uh you know gina carano cara dune thing I just wish, you know, cooler heads had prevailed. Um, I think it was a bit much what she posted. Um, if you're on a show making good money, you're not oppressed. Uh, you're not a victim. Um, I, I don't, you know, think that that needed to be tweeted or said. At the same time, I think Disney overreacted. Do you know what I mean? I, I just wish there was kind of an adult in the room to tell everyone to calm down. Um, but you know, I, I, I think I think it was a bit much on her part. If, if you feel the need to post kind of this stuff and you feel like you're a victim, I think you got to give your head a shake and look around and see everything that you got. You're you're on a you're a co-star on, on a very successful show. You're in the Star Wars universe. You're beloved by fans. Um, you can have these thoughts. You can have these feelings. I think that's fine. But um, you know, sometimes you know the better part of wisdom i guess is just to keep some of these things to yourself you know and uh do your show and, and be happy and 
I, I just think it was all a bit much. I, and I think firing her was a bit much. But back to the, you know, how do you replace her? There are there's some talk of replacing her with the character of Harris and Dula, um, who comes, who's you know part of what Star Wars fans call the Filoni universe, the Filoni verse, and uh, which is a reference to Dave Filoni, who um, was instrumental in the Clone Wars animated series and the Rebels animated series, and he's a, a fan favorite for certain. Um, but she's a very very cool character. She was the captain of um, the Ghost, which was a ship. And she's even in Rogue One, like the ship is in Rogue One, makes a very small appearance. Her 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 name is called over the PA uh, as they're taking, you know, action battle stations. So you could, you know, replace Rangers of the New Republic and, and have it be Harris and Dula. And I think that'd be, it, Cara Dune would be better. Cara Dune would be um, the best fit because she's liked, um, but, you know, you know, Disney went this way, so uh, maybe you put in Harrison Dula, which I think would be really cool. I, I really like that character. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know the character uh, to spec, but you know the the issue is. I think the issue is that um, is that it's not like she's you know on set or on the company time, you know, tweeting things, right? And so she's she's in some other setting on 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 fate you know on what on, on these social media platforms right and uh the 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 difference is and i mean we could we could give her some credit for being sort of like a partial like if they had said hey you know we're signing you up for five years we're gonna put you in two episodes you know what i mean you're financially you're okay you know what i mean um that's one thing but but they i may have probably know they did do that but the i i think that the problem is she doesn't feel attached to their brand in, in the way that she thinks in her head, oh, I, whatever I say represents Disney, right? Like if I go kick, kick a Dalmatian, it's over for me. Not that she kick a Dalmatian, but, but you know what I mean? It'd be like, uh, I'm so now associated with, with Disney. Like uh, when I heard that, you know, the initial news story, she's, she's tweeting something. I'm like, well, that's great, but she's not, we, we upgraded her to co-star, but she's, she's not the star of the show. She's on the show. She's a major part of the show. Right. And so, the question is how you know how little apart do you have to be? Like Bill Burr is on the show. I've never listened to his podcast, but that guy must say worse. He, there's no way he doesn't say worse stuff on his podcast every day. Yeah, he does, but he's but but Bill Burr has been in the industry for so long that he can get away with it. And you know the people that um, are not fans of Bill Burr and, and, and maybe don't like what he has to do can just roll their eyes and, and just not say anything and be like, well, that's just Bill Burr. Do you know what I mean? Cause I saw that when he did an award for, uh, what was it? The Emmys? He presented an award at the Emmys. Did you see that one? Uh, no, I didn't see that. Okay. So anyway, so, so Bill Burr presents an award at the Emmys and he says some, uh, some controversial stuff. I don't even know if he says some controversial stuff. I remember watching, um, E.T. Canada cover uh, Bill Burr's uh, controversial sayings. And, you know, one of the hosts just sort of rolled her eyes and went, it's Bill Burr. And everyone just ignore him, politely go along. But, you know, Bill Burr has, uh, has got a long career where he can kind of get away with that. I don't think Gina Carano has that. I, you know, I, you know, I just think it was all a bit much. I think it was all a bit much on, on everybody. And, uh, you know, she's not on company time, but you've, you know, that's why for the most part, I think, you know, social media should be ignored by everybody. I think we should all get off social media. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Well, and it's, it's amplified up now because I mean, uh, the, the, the previous, the, I mean, previously they weren't just not letting you share something you wanted to share. Right. Like per, that, now you can take an article and you're like, hey, I want to share that. And, and, and the, the software will refuse to share something. It'll just like, no, you can't share this news story with other people that are in your friend group, which and that, that's that's sort of uh, um, crossing the line to straight um, straight editorial sort of interference in these things. Right. There, it's Facebook and Twitter are now basically a magazine. Right. With just. With you know, with just a million uh, crappy, ill thought out op eds, and then you know we get a computer to sort through them. Don't participate then. Then just don't participate. If you really want to send me an article, you got my email address. 
well, I don't participate. I don't really, I don't, I don't really use, I don't really um, uh, use Twitter because I find that's uh, that's uh, that's problematic. Uh, the YouTube, uh, the, the YouTube, uh, the YouTube comments I take away, right? And uh, the only thing I do have uh, for the podcast is like a locals.com account. Have you seen that? No, I don't even know what that is. What is that? Okay, so this is Dave Rubin's uh retake on the internet and it works kind of in a in a kind of an odd way so you when you sign up it's like you get your login or whatever right and it'll offer you various channels you can sign up for right and um when you sign up for one you can see the things that are posted in there and then if you try and post it says oh hold on you have to sign up to be part of this channel and you have to pay money so the, the minimum i think is two bucks a month Right. And then then you're under the the custodial leadership of whoever created the channel and they can, you know, they can ban you. And I mean, you're free to get another, you know, another account under another surname, pay more two dollars, you know, whatever the, the, the subscription is and uh, and post something else that gets you thrown out. But th there's no point in that. And I, and 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 you have to, you know, for you to sign up on this thing, you're, you have to be interjecting something where like. Is it worth me to put this out in the world if it costs me two dollars? Right, 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 right. So you're saying once you add sort of the monetary value to it, that so are you saying that the if you add monetary value to it, it'll filter out a bunch of noise? Is that sort of the conclusion? I guess. I I don't know. I I can't. I don't know if it's 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 a new system, so it's not you know fair to say how it's turned out. But I do think there's. That you know, if you are um, uh, about to write that someone is a jerk, right? You're like, I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm going to, I'm going to to spit out my emotions onto someone else over this platform. I'll feel better. They'll feel worse. I don't know them. I don't care, right? So, so for for the person spitting venom, it's like a it's like a costless endeavor. It's like it's getting them self righteousness, like the the value is accruing to them, and the negative things are accruing to other people, right? But um, but now that it's two dollars, it's costing me. It's like it's cost me two dollars, right? Do I? How excited am I to sign up to this thing and spend my time to pay money to to inject venom at people and be kicked off? I, I don't know that it works, but it's a different mentality, I would think, right? I'd say I I know nothing about it. It's interesting. Um... I just, I think I'm, you know, over time, I've been slowly backing out of the whole social media exchange anyway. I was very excited. I loved Facebook years and years and years ago. You know, I was on it for many years. I never got on Twitter. I never got on Snapchat or anything like that. I, I, I don't know what it is about Twitter. It just it seems terrible to me. I don't know. Um, but I've been slowly backing out of it. And I just, it's not worth it anymore, uh, the way I see it. It's just... Uh, I kind of came to the conclusion a while ago, maybe about a year ago, like I, I'm more interested in just tending to my little garden uh, and my little garden, you know, would be my wife and my children and, and maybe my job a little bit and then just my artistic endeavors, whatever they may be. And so uh, I think we should all just tend to our little gardens a little bit more. Well, uh, I, that's the, I think the, the, the problematic notion is that is that when you get you know one of these characters one of these actors who publishes thing in social media is that they think you know their garden's in danger right it's like it's like wherever their garden is there's a problem in the town right and 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 i can't just sit here and tend to my garden and you know wait till it's 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 you know it's a star wars episode ringed with stormtroopers it's not a reference it's star wars stormtroopers is is the question I would have to that is it's, okay? I think people can feel that way, like yeah, like you know my my gardens and but the question I'd be like, is it like is it really in danger? You're making good money. You're on a show. You're getting the attention that you want from from fans. Your your career, you know, speaking of, of Gina Crony, your career is on a trajectory. Maybe she felt like her her little garden was being threatened, but. And I think a lot of people that maybe get on social media that do feel like their garden is being threatened. I don't know why we, I guess I invented this now. Um, is, is it really though? Do you know what I mean? Like, or is it just, we sort of invent threats on the outside and we just, you know, feel like there's these threats, but they're not really there. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm naive, but I've just, 
tend to my garden. I think it's because it's because if you if you feel legitimate threat and you realize your only defense is combined action, right? It's like it's like your enemy has combined action, right? Like the one element I did like back to combined action is that you know when first she was uh, approached by the uh, rebels, Kara's like, nope, we got to I'm I'm a marshal. I got my little town. We're good here. I'm tending my garden here. I'm tending my garden, right? And the guy's like, listen, but 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 then the what's the eye opener? The eye opener is there is a base on her planet. They had no idea what was going on. They, you know, they completely misjudged the situation when they went in there. Like, we're just gonna mop this bizarre lava extraction uh thing uh up. Uh, you know, as if the as if the the I mean the Republic really sucks. Like they're they have they have nothing uh, because they're they're like hey, they're, there's all these you know rebel starfleeters cruising around on the rim. There's like old installations, and and they have no idea what's going on in any of them. And that's fine. I that's that's the the fog of war, all that sellable. But you can tell the idea is that at some point you didn't see the scene. She went. You know, it, it, we can all attend our little planets and attend our city. And uh, what happens is that's great up until, you know, the Empire decides that that it's our city now and it's our planet now. And they just overwhelm you with force. And they're like, hey, do you want to be part of the Empire? Listen, when the Empire rolls in, I'm all for taking up arms. Do you know what I mean? Let's take up arms against the Empire when the Empire rolls in. There has to be a moment when um, the Empire's... Uh, presence is so entirely overwhelming that you realize right off the bat it's futile right it's it's like it's like the overwhelming force is here and then we the, the problem which we're we're now going to discuss is living under the empire is not completely unlivable it's it's not like you can't be a merchant and go about your business like if you're just a merchant in the business Mining, you know, you've no political aspirations. You're just sort of trying to get rich and, you know, mop up what best car you can. Um, uh, and it's not like the Empire, it, you know, the stormtroopers defend you in that case. It's the thief running through the bazaar that's disrupting, you know, the, the Empire's uh, uh, plans. You're beneath the notice of this, you know, of this construction, right? So it's not like it's, it, you know, the the trick and don't tell anyone of being an authoritarian dictator is making life just enough livable under the system that people are like, meh, I'm getting by, my kids are getting by. You know, it's not till the whole society breaks down. The, the stormtrooper can kick his foot in your door at any point and be like, I'm gonna inspect your house and you've got no recourse. Do you know what I mean? Like that's where you know it, it could be going well, but you know, is that there's a moment when you're like, hey, I'm tending my garden, I'm whatever, right? I'm keeping my thing, and someone knocks the door. Hey, Mike, we get a, we got a problem here with with this other band. You know, the town over there sort of getting an army. You're like, no, I'll just tend my garden. Now I'll just tend my garden. Now I'll just tend my garden. Uh, my garden is burning. My house is burned down. You know, and it's it. There's the it's it's it. There's there's no there's the people are saying it's 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 like the um um the infinite the infant reaction right if this if this continues at this rate right you will we'll be doomed and then people don't want to take one step down that path because they're like oh this is where it ends right but they they don't have a clean delineation um uh the, i mean you have sort of the rebels and you have the the empire the rebels seem okay to us right because they're they're sort of on our side right but they're but they're not functioning. We can't see how there is a completely different experience because we don't see the stormtroopers hassling random people in the show, right? Right, 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 right. Well, we do. We do. In Star Wars Rebels, we we see them, you know, harassing people. But it gets, you know, I'm reminded of the uh, of uh, the movie Clerks. Have you ever seen that one where yeah, yeah. they have the whole discussion of the Death Star? And it's like, you know, when those rebels blew up the Death Star, you know, they were contracted plumbers there. You right. know, that you just want to go home to their wife and kids, you know, and, and they didn't really care that they were contributing to a super weapon. They were just doing a job, you know. Well, I, and, I, and I will say that there is a strength, like there's a strength in the current, you know, the Mandalorian universe where you don't actually feel like it's preaching at you, which is which is, you know, a differential from most 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 current fiction or whatever. Uh, Bill Maher had this thing about. This Bill Maher had this send up of the of the current um, 
Academy Awards lists. It's eight movies that are atypical Academy Awards. And he's basically like, he's basically like, all these movies are sad and depressing. I'm not going to the movies to be made feel sad and depressing. Like you have to make a movie I want to watch. And is you can, it can have a, a moral to the story. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be uplifting. That's what fantasy is for. Fantasy is to take us out of the mundane and to, and to, and to make us feel heroic. Right. We want to feel heroic because we're mostly not, you know, and we want to go hear heroic stories and, and live vicariously through these, through these heroes. Um, yeah but it doesn't it doesn't seem that I, okay so now you know what you you hit upon you you hit upon um um my complaint now with the whole thing <laughs> Car- Car- Cara Dune that character yeah, is the heroic well, character she her. seems heroic right she yeah. she she she's building the town she's keeping it safe they opened a school Cara Dune is heroic she's a hero absolutely 100% the Mandalorian and the Jedi and the 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 Jedi are just on weird personal <laughs> quests, separated from everyone. It's like the littlest hobo with a person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing. I love that show growing up. No, I love that show growing up too. But I, 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 you know, the 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 whole listen. The it's it's a great show. The dog goes from place to place. It puts right what must be wrong. Um, you know, hoping it's next jump is the jump home so it's like quantum leap plus being a dog but um scabacula should never stop doing that show they would never run out of scripts yeah they'd never run out of scripts never you know, you'd still on it yeah but um the uh uh the but the problematic element of the whole thing is that she seems heroic to me she seems like the hero and he's he's banging around maybe he'll seem more heroic in the next thing but I think he is heroic. I think, I think, I think he's like I back to what I said. He's trying to bring his tribe together. You know, he's he's trying to he's trying to bring everyone home to the promised land. You know? Yeah, but we're not. But this is the thing: we're not in the tribe because we don't want to live the rest of our life on the inside of a helmet. <laughs> Maybe I want to live in a helmet. Next time we come back to Cara Dune, she's gonna have you know a husband. Right, and a couple kids. You know, she's she's emasculating him. That's unavoidable. But no, she's not. Give over. Give over. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Okay. <laughs> um, so she's, you know, she's, and you're like, oh, look, this. What's you know, this is this is this is a happy story. That's the other thing. It's it's I can't. Where is the Mandalorian going to break out into a happy story? This guy's tortured. He's a disaster. What would have been cool is if um. You know, maybe maybe Cara Dune finds a husband and it's Henry Cavill, you know, because those two were an item in real life for a while. And uh, we bring Superman to the Star Wars universe and he's uh, some some badass, you know. They were a good pairing, I always thought. You know, Gina Carano and Henry Cavill were, were a good match. Yeah, the, listen, the, the casting problem, the casting problem with Henry Cavill goes like this. You know, this character is Clark Kent too, right? They're like, yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be kind of like, you know, a nerdy punch down, you know, reporter just making it through because he looks like Superman without being <laughs> Superman. Like if you just saw him with his shirt off, you're like, that guy can save me. Definitely. <laughs> oh, he has Superman powers unneeded, but great. I mean, he'd be fine anyway. It was the guy benching 220, 400 pound deadlift. He doesn't really need any additional powers. Um, so he looks a little bit too much like Superman. Yeah, the Star Wars universe is less is is lesser without Gina Carano. I think that's for certain. And the Star Wars universe is lesser uh, without Cara Dune. You know, and there's you know, if you follow the Star Wars rumor mill, uh, that you know John Favreau is attempting to get Gina Carano back um, because they had a whole storyline written for her. I think the storyline went that she's somewhat force sensitive and, and she ends up uh, descending into the Sith. And then maybe she has uh, a line of redemption at the end. But they had they had a whole story for her, and but it, it's it's lesser now without Gina Carano for certain. It's lesser now without Cara Dune. Um, it's it's there's a piece missing, you know. Well, because it doesn't make it, because the thing of it is is the the problematic element they have of the story is they're trying to go to these different planets they're trying to bang around to these different places they keep sending you to this other environment with all these things right but but they're but 
like they're they're trying to make a through line narrative. Otherwise, it's just a whole series of disconnected episodes that never go anywhere, right? So you know you have the bat, you have, you have the the evil guy. So the I, and again, I'm not faulting them for weirdly checking in back to the same. Let's go see old friends. Apparently, the ship flies for free. We'll just just fly it around the universe. Um, hey, I need repairs again on the Ravencrest. It, like it blew up. Good because that was about where it was headed anyway. Um, but the uh, the so they're trying to glue it together, right? And um, it's not so much. It's not so much as um, is that is that uh, there's something sort of magical about the character that 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 can't be replaced in this universe where they're banging around anyway, right? It's that it's that this thing came up. There was a controversy, and they said instead of staring there and saying, "You know what? Those aren't that's not a great series of comments. We're not excited about that series of comments." At the same time, she's not. She they could have just said she's not currently employed by Disney. She has no active contract with Disney. Let it blown over and then hired her for six months. And the only people that would have cared don't watch the show anyway. So it doesn't matter what, you know, no one would have been like, oh, instead they have this reverse problem where they've kind of irritated people who would watch the show with this element. And I'm not saying there's no one who's, you know, who's, who's, you know, who is her to do the whole thing. I thought that, um, so the original, uh, the, the, the original comment that she made was like a Nazi comparison, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it's 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 not like hey my you know it's it's that um uh the um that the that the uh, uh that in Nazi Germany uh, whatever I'm paraphrasing heavily um uh it was the average person don't don't can don't don't pretend that it's a you know it's a small that 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 this stuff went on and 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 you know was going on even if the sort of average person rolled up it i think actually that the basic the basic summary of her of her well the, you, now you can understand why she feels you know her guards under threat because her basic instruction is you know the 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 way this the sort of evil thing flowered up is by everybody just staying quiet you know what i mean they didn't go with the plan of oh the empire has landed you know let's let's get at the pitchforks they went with like well let's just chill out and see how this thing goes you know I mean, yeah, tend to my own garden. Maybe the empire. I'm sure they sell fertilizer and pitchforks, and you know. I, I, I get it. I, I just don't think it was necessary. I think that that construction, I think, is is to be honest, I think it's out of touch with reality. You know, like uh, you're you're doing okay. You're on a show. You're making money. Um, there is no there is no galactic empire. There is, there isn't. It just her her construction her construction was the political the like. It's it's that is that the political divide in the states was getting to the point where the left and the right were treating each other in 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 a, in the same level of dehumanization as these you know previous what we all agree are terrible stains on history you know um, history I should say a, a terrible stain on humankind right um, but she's. Ex- Experiencing this, here, see, here's my point: is that she's experiencing this through social media. Do you know what I mean? Like, like all of this is coming through social media. So don't engage. Don't don't engage. It's it's not real. Social media is not real. It's a false reality. It's it's not it's not it's not real. Well, because it's real to these companies, though, right? Because these companies. Now, listen. Do I think that they're? Do I think that they're? They're they're massively massively misjudging the number of actual people that care, or we even would hear about these issues. You know what I mean? And and therefore say, well, I'm not going to Star Wars because they didn't fire, you know, the grip that held the light in Scene Three. <laughs> uh, you know, he was he tweeted that he was going to vote for Donald Trump if he came back. Yeah, you yeah. know how how dare they let him light the next scene? Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's not actually happening. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, I, I don't know. I think cooler heads could have prevailed. I think there should have been an adult in the room. Uh, I think what she tweeted was just, I, I just, I get her point. I, just, I don't, it was, much, it was too much. It was too much. She didn't need to, she didn't need to tweet it. She, she was doing pretty well, you know, and it's not, it's not reality. Right. And that's my point is that she's 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 on social media and she's created this reality because she's engaging in this in this, um, you know, virtual reality. It's not really real. 
and and she's created a narrative and then she posted this thing and then the people fire her and then you know she retreats into her cave i just thought there shouldn't have been an adult in the room somewhere to her posting something to disney you know her she should have just thought twice like does do you need to post this is it real is it real she thinks it's real but it's not so the one thing that I would push back a little bit is that in the states, this the, the the stuff on social media seems to be becoming very operational, right? Like Seattle is a burned out wreck, right? Like it is a burned out wreck, and 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 you don't need to get into a, a, a you know a a pointing fingers um, a debate on you know who's to blame for this this thing being a wreck, right? But you can see the spark, you can see the organizational technology comes from social media. Right. The rallying comes through the Internet where you say we're going to show up at this place at this time with this goal. Who's with us? Right. And and so so what's happening is the companies who are uh, in charge of this thing go, well, can we be responsible for, you know, having the technology that combines all these people at this point? Right. So I don't think it's fair to say that it's completely unreal, because in the States, you can see what happens when 200 people, you know, all show up. But this has happened throughout history before social media. I mean, that's just, this is how the king got beheaded in the French Revolution. People are going to organize. You know, people if they want to organize, they're going to organize. Um, uh, whether or not social media is there, it happens. They just organize in different ways, whether it be carrier pigeons or, <laughs> or, or knocking on doors. I mean, this isn't the first time in human history revolutions have happened and cities have been burnt out and people have been killed. And I mean – Social is just social media assisting in this. Yeah, whatever the tool of communication is. But I think a lot of the thing back the Cara Dune thing is that, you know, I suspect she was probably living on social media as actors and actresses would do and a lot of people do. And I'm just my point is that it's not it's not really real. It's not a real reality in that, you know, the meat's still getting shipped to the store. The rice bags are still coming in. Clean water is getting produced. Um, it's not as bad as, as people are making it out to be. Oh, oh no! Listen, but my uh, so to to your your point is that there's a whole bunch of people complaining on social media about other people who have it better than basically anyone, and whatever your gripe is, uh, whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever gripe you're 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 in. You know, the fact that you have a phone and you could read anything that would enrich you instead of typing stuff on social media, which is enriching no one, including yourself, right, is a problem. But I, I'll push back a little bit that for also one of the, you know, because one of the things they do in Hollywood right now is that when you're trying to get hired for these parts, they say, oh, show me your social media. We want to see how many followers you have, right? Because they know the followers on social media. You can just tweet, hey, I'm in this movie and instantly operationalize Um um, whatever, whatever uh, uh, film it's, it's the advertising component that the, that the, that the, uh, whatever the, the producers or whatever care about in these, these actors. So I think it's slightly naive to say, oh, I'm an actress. I'm, you know, I'm too good for social media. I mean, when you made it. No, of course, of course. But if you're going to be an actress, you, you know, that that's part and parcel of, of what that world is. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's part and parcel of it. So, yeah, well, listen, I'm not saying it's not a stupid thing to do. And I, I think I just think I just think it's... The day, at the end of the day, I think Cardoon is going to come back. I think Judy Carano will be rehired at some point in the future. I think this will all blow over and maybe everyone's a little bit wiser on 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 what they post. And maybe companies a little bit wiser on uh, approaching situations with a little bit more. I don't know, maturity and wisdom, perhaps. I think that will happen too. And and the basic reason why I think it will happen is because they will they will they will search through the the, the Rolodex of what makes sense, as you said in in the in the continued the continued storyline, and say, this character is a through line. She's um charismatic, she looks powerful. You don't you don't because she's obviously powerful in real life, right? You don't see her you don't see her doing like, I don't know, stunts or throwing people and be like, I don't believe, you know what I mean? You don't have this, like, I don't believe that. Someone up, you, you, you go, yeah, Gia Carano beat that person up and I believe she could do it. You know, you don't go, this is incredible. Right. And well, I, you know what now, now, man, it's, 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 but 
you know what it's this is what's good about it though it's credible but you don't get the uh, you don't get the impression at least in the show this is translating to a negative aspect of her character like we associate this person that can be this tough guy i'm gonna beat everybody up i'm a big tough guy we're like i don't really want to hear about it right uh that you know it's great that you can beat people up or whatever but but that's not a if she's not she doesn't seem to be taking the fact that she could beat people up into every conversation into every context you know she's sort of smiley and like hey we're gonna you know go drop the little guy off to school she's not like hey mandalorian if we don't drop this kid off to school i'll beat you up you know she's not like hey come help us blow up this lava base because you know that's what we do she's like could you help us please you got time we're repairing your ship um you know help us out help us out with this you know help us out with this project so the um uh so yeah listen i will we'll see how it goes but but the but the point isn't so much this the point is you know are they going to infect uh the star wars universe because the the i felt the last three movies um uh, the, the last movie uh which i think is third in the in the theoretical uh chronological ordering of the star wars series um had the problem in it where where i thought it seemed beset by somebody looking through every scene and saying, well, you know, this can't happen and this can't happen because it'll set off some social media dynamic that, you know what I mean? That we can't, or a social justice dynamic that we can't deal with. Oh yeah. I mean, it's evident. I think even the actors complained about it. Um, gosh, John Boyega has complained about that. Like the, the, the sequel trilogy was a mess. There's been a lot of ink spilt on this. Again, since we're having a Star Wars discussion, I will push back. I think John Boyd, I think his the problem with most most of his complaints is I think the problem is is just the original character is a Star Wars stormtrooper. So when they come into the show initially, you just have this writing, you just have this technical problem with the character. They're a Star Wars stormtrooper. So initially, why are we hanging out with this guy? Well, he knows the base, he knows the codes, he knows the lay of the land. That's why we're that's why we're tagging along with him. But as the show goes along, we start getting like multiple Jedi in play, ever more powerful characters, and he's still the stormtrooper. They, we can't turn him into. It's like there's no scene where he like drinks the magic force potion and goes like I'm a Jedi now because we'd be like this is the stu we just leave. We'd be like you know you've you've made a mockery of yourself, right? So uh, the problem, I think, just from a technical writing perspective, is they have a little bit of the um, uh, the Avengers Marvel superhero problem that the the characters are all different actual power levels. Now they've you know there's no reason that Black Widow would have anything to do with Thor on the battlefield, right? Because he's applying cosmic powers on the celestial level to an enemy at the celestial level. And she's like, I can kick and hit things. That's great. You go and see if you can, you know, do something else. And, and it's just a technical, now they've sort of solved that by weirdly morphing all the power levels. So it seems more sane that, you know, that Hawkeye bow and arrow guy is still in there. Oh, he's got superpower arrows. It's like, oh, all these arrows are great. Um, but, but, that that I think is the that I think is the problem that that character has because I think most of his complaint was well they didn't do anything with the character, you know what I mean they couldn't I don't know figure it how to how to work it into more things. You know when I saw um, the Force Awakens and they were um, going along the storyline of the Finn and Ray kind of love love story, um, I was really excited about that. I, I, I and uh, you know there's a couple of scenes where Finn's trying to quote unquote rescue Ray. And he's holding her hand and she's slapping her his hand away. It's so, sort of cute. And I was very hopeful for that, for that storyline. And then it just it, it went nowhere. Um, and I think there was a lot of missed missed opportunities. But anyway, the sequel trilogy, um, if I could recommend oh, yeah. uh, then I, would, I would recommend uh, a, a YouTube video uh, from one of my favorite YouTube channels called uh, the, the Closer Look. And it's called How to Kill a Franchise. And um, it's probably it's it's an hour long. I wouldn't say it's succinct, but it really edifies what went wrong with the sequel trilogy and and a lot of the fan base's major complaints. Which bringing it back to Ahsoka, if I may, uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about with regards to the Ahsoka show is there's this rumor uh, floating around, and again, I think I'm mostly naive about these things, um, but the idea that uh, the 
Dave Filoni and John Favreau are going to um, retcon the whole sequel trilogy into a place where it doesn't happen. And the literary device which they'll use for this is called the Veil of the Force. Uh, so if I could recommend to you and to anyone listening to this, the show Star Wars Rebels is extremely important with regards to lore and mythology and storyline in the Star Wars universe because a lot of these um, narrative nuggets are are placed in, in, in that show. And one of them is the Veil of the Force where Ezra Bridger uh, goes into this sort of force mountain, as it were, and he rescues Ahsoka Tano from her fight with Darth Vader. And uh, she was about to be killed by Darth Vader in, in one of the earlier episodes. And this sort of this window, and he goes into the Veil of the Force, and it's all these pathways and timelines. And he finds Ahsoka at the you know apex of her battle with Darth Vader, and he reaches in to the um, door and he pulls her out. And he rescues her from that sort of final blow. And so the rumor is, is that such a thing will occur where, you know, with the Ahsoka Tano show, she's going to look for Ezra Bridger, and they're going to re-enter the Veil of the Force. And we're, we're going to go to this, I think it's going to culminate in this moment where Darth Vader throws Emperor Palpatine into the pit, and apparently Palpatine survives this through Sith magic or, or whatever it is, and uh, Ezra Bridger and Ahsoka Tano will make sure that the Emperor doesn't survive, that through the Veil of the Force... They'll make sure he 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 doesn't do his trickster kind of stuff, which there therefore makes the sequel trilogy as we know it null and void, and makes it an alternate universe. I don't think anyone believes that that's actually going to happen. I think I'm I'm one of the few that that really hopes and believes that that will actually happen. I and I think I posted that opinion once online, and I was yelled at with a lot of vitriol and called stupid and naive and whatnot. But and maybe I am. You know, but uh, I, I I really hope that that will actually happen, and that the sequel trilogy will be um, demarcated as some alternate universe. You know, well, I listen. I don't like when they do that. I always think that's weak. I think that's weak, weak writing. I do not like multiple universes either. I do not like multiple timelines. I I hate it. But in this circumstance, that would be a, a pill I would bitterly swallow because. I think the ends justify the means. I listen. I I think that's that's problematic for the viewership too. Like the average person is like, you know, what's what's going on in this thing? And I think the Star Wars Star Wars is the primary example where I'm gonna I'm gonna push off on. They no, they no. took Everybody they took or not Star Star Trek. Here, give me a sec. So they they you have Star Trek, which is um, it normally. Uh, the Star Trek is kind of an interesting science fiction thing. And then uh, they win or there's a victory condition for the uh, for the good guys in Starfleet. And you're like, yeah, I want to be part of Starfleet. Starfleet's good. And then they started a series of shows. The first one in which, I don't know, a billion some odd people die in, in Vulcan. Right. And, th- and like there's no win condition there. It's like it's like they're always happy that they lived. Yeah, we got the Enterprise through another one. Yay. Sorry, Vulcan. You know, we couldn't solve it. And then, you know, the next episode, you know, the the Enterprise goes through downtown San Francisco in the middle of the day, crushing office building after office building, 10, 20 of them. I don't know what the casualty count is for that. I don't care how many teleporters there are. There has to be casualties in this accident. And, and they're like, yay, we got the bad guy. Oh, well, we sort of saved some people. And 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 that's the that's the the. Um, the bridge on i think i think there's there's a a problem you know whenever you're killing the universe i worry that it's a bridge to gray fiction yes look the the whole um time loop time jumping literary technique i was never a fan of it's one of the reasons why i always liked star wars over star trek i was a big trekkie you know back in the day i loved star trek but every time there was this sort of time loop um I remember there's one episode of the next generation where I think they time looped and, and, and the enterprise was in the middle of a war with like the Romulans or something. And, uh, and then they time looped back to the established, you know, timeline we know. And I was like, well, wait a minute, that timeline seemed really interesting. Like, why am I not hearing that story? Do you know what I mean? And so I don't like the time loop time jump thing 
And the reason I liked Star Wars was because it was such a cohesive mythology for the most part. And one of the things I loved about Star Wars and still love about Star Wars is that I find it to be a very democratic story story in that you have multiple artists playing in this giant sandbox together for the most part creating and weaving together a cohesive and coherent tapestry of story. And I don't think in the literary world such a thing actually exists, I think, ever at all in human history where you have hundreds and hundreds of artists and writers all contributing to, again, for the most part, a cohesive story. And there wasn't any time jump. There wasn't any time loop. One thing that happened in one novel would affect something in another novel. And the writers and the artists involved were very well versed with what had come before them. There was great homage paid um, to everyone who gave their artistic contribution to this thing. That's what I love about Star Wars is that it's cohesive. So with saying about, you know, the veil of the force and they're going to you know pull the emperor out. Do I like that? No, I, I don't. But I also think that the sequel trilogy was so poisonous and, and so damaging that I think that's the only way that's the only way out of this because they've written themselves into this, I think a horrible dead end. And as you and I said years ago, back in 2014, when Disney acquired that one of the reasons they were going to erase the expanded universe was because they wanted to um, give viewers and, and new and new people to the franchise, you know, exciting stories to tell. It, it, it revealed a deep ignorance of how deep the Star Wars universe actually is. It's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. And if you can't, I think, you know, to quote you, I think this, if you can't write a good story in the EU that has excitement for the, for the audience, then you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't write because that's how big the Star Wars universe is. But I think it speaks to the fact that how damaging I think the sequel trilogy was. It was, it was artistically horrible. And I am okay with this timeline story to fix it. If, if we need to and have an, this one offshoot alternate universe. And, and if that happens, I'm going to quote back with glee to the people that applauded the destruction of the EU. And one of the things they would say is, well, you can still read Heir to the Empire and enjoy the story. You can still, you know, enjoy the EU. It doesn't have to be canon. And I think what made those stories so great is that they were canon and that they weren't you know, to use, you know, biblical language, apocrypha literature, they were, they were canon literature. And so if Filoni and, and Favreau do this veil of the force literary technique, I can't wait to say to the people who love the last Jedi, you know, well, you can still enjoy the last Jedi. You can still be part of your head canon, you know, to just swing that argument back around on them. So. But what do you think is the damage? What do you think is the damaging element of it? The idea that uh, Ray is a Mary Sue that she's just this unbeatable character that doesn't need to train, um, that, you know, she's perfect in every way. She has no character flaws. Um, no one's interested in this kind of character. But to reference again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference the audience, if they're so inclined, uh, to go and watch the video uh, How to Kill a Franchise by The Closer Look, and, and he, goes, he goes through sort of step by step. I, I can't marshal those arguments right now. Um, suffice it to say that when you and I walked out of The Last Jedi, we were a bit disturbed. I don't know if you remember that evening. And we, we went back to your place, and we were kind of like, what the hell was that? Like, what 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 just happened? We couldn't even figure out what had happened. But we, we were mugged. I think we were mugged in the street. And we weren't even – and, you know, something was stolen from us. And we were checking our pockets trying to figure out, you know, what was taken. And uh, I felt like – I think that's what I felt like when I walked out of The Last Jedi. I had been mugged. And then the people that liked The Last Jedi felt the same way when they walked out of Rise of Skywalker. They, they walked out of Rise of Skywalker, the fans of The Last Jedi, and they too felt like they had been mugged. So I think there's something we can – there's common ground we can agree upon, those who dislike Rise of Skywalker and those who dislike The Last Jedi. We all agree someone somewhere was mugged somewhere. And, and something was stolen. Um, but yeah, I, 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 be, I believe it begins with the recharacter with the character of Ray, 
and the fact that she's a Mary Sue, and there's a great video on on there if someone's interested. It's like why Ray is Mary Sue and Luke Skywalker is not. Um, but there was just there's been a lot of ink spilt on this, and and those who are familiar with the arguments already already know the arguments. So I think the time back to the the point is. I think the timeline narrative of erasing this and, and, and putting it, demarcating it as some alternate timeline is not the best solution, but I, I, I think it's so poisonous, that timeline, that that's what we have to do. And, and I think it's my hope that Filoni and Favreau see that and realize that. And, and they become the steward of the world. See, I think the problem with the movies is that when you just take uh... – the Boydega character is that is that the, he has multiple potential love interests, but the reason why they can't do any of the love interests is because they'll instantly know they'll be accused of 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 executing some kind of racial or interracial trope. That's their problem. Whoever he gets with, they're like, oh look, they're putting thing A with thing B. How stereotypical! They're putting a, you know type race A with race B. How stereotypical! So they 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 can't get they can't execute any of these normal romantic relationships because they, they so fear the blowback of someone saying, Oh, they did this typical thing with this great franchise. Right. So they're, they're, they're trying to make sure they never get their hands on the, on the hot seat and, um, or the, you know, the hot pan. And there's one, um, it, it's also, it's also, I've noticed why this is one of the things there's, there's, I think there's a scene in the last one where they're all on the ship and they're, and they're, I don't know, talking about the plan or whatever, but you notice that like none of the characters can criticize one of the other characters. Like nobody can, nobody even sort of says this is an idiotic plan or, or you know what I mean? Any of this, because I think they, they just fear it'll create this, Oh, uh, uh, social justice class a is now attacking social justice class B right in the stories of, you know, in, in the contest of stories that this must mean the Disney corporation hates a or hates B or whatever. And they, they rattle around in their head and they forget to go, well, hold on. What does the audience actually want to see? Well, we would have been fine if Ray and Finn got together. I don't think anyone in the actual audience would have gone, Oh, hell stereotypical that they get together and there's a happy story. I didn't come to the movies for this. Yeah. I was very excited for that story. As I said, in, in when we saw the force awakens, I, I thought, I was, I liked it. I liked it. I thought I was really excited about that. And then Kylo Ren came in and I was like, the last Jedi came in and I think cracked all over everything. Not that I was a fan of, of, of the force awakens. I was, I was okay with it. I mean, it, I think it generated enough goodwill with the fans that we were like, Oh, okay. This is something it, it can, it can go somewhere. Um, it was a bit, you know, they were, they were redoing um, a new hope. Right, they were just reshooting a new hope, essentially. Um, but yeah, so this, the the sequel trilogy, I think, it's got problems. It's got problems, and it needs to be it needs to be expunged from the canon. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see how it all turns out. So, uh, where uh, the best place for for people to get in contact uh, with your work is the uh, Star Wars chronology project at uh blogspot.com and uh thanks very much for being on the show mike okay thank you